Hello everybody, welcome to our laptop take-home presentation. My name is Jeremy Hammer and I'm the Technology Education Specialist here at MS8072, which means I help teach students, teachers, and even you parents how to make the most of the technology we provide. Our whole technology team, Jim LaPlante, Eric Wood, and Kelly Bowles, keep all the laptops, networks, student information systems, and all the other related technology running in this district. If you ever have any questions about anything technology related, please email us at technology at ms8072.org, and we will do our best to help you. Thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video. Ever since we started doing formal laptop take-home presentations, we have found the increase in communication about the MLTI program has greatly helped parents and students to more clearly understand how to care for their laptops. It also showcases how technology is used by students in our district and how important parent participation is to keeping students safe online. Damage to laptops has been lower than it was before we took the time to do this with you, and we do find less inappropriate internet traffic on student devices. We know it's a little repetitive for 8th grade parents, but once a year, this allows us to deliver a lot of information in an easy to consume manner and allows you to remain in the comfort of your own home rather than dealing with the inconvenience of driving out to see us. Of course, if you do have any questions or concerns at all, please feel free to request some time to talk with us in person. The job I do now did not exist when I went to this middle school when it opened in 1989. I always come back to that thought when I try to imagine what jobs and learning opportunities our kids will have five to ten years from now. Whatever may come, I hope you all understand a core digital literacy will be critical in nearly all trades. This is why we don't usually treat technology as a separate skill to learn but rather we include it as a component of learning, blending it with traditional teaching methods and making working in teams through digital collaboration second nature. To make this digital collaboration work in our classrooms, our teachers must trust that certain expectations will be met so they can comfortably move forward with lesson plans that rely on technology for full effect. Students must be allowed to go online, bring laptops home, and have fast internet access at home for this to work well. I can't stress enough, fast internet access at home is something all students should have to succeed. And if your family is finding it difficult to provide this, we are happy to consult with you about solutions that may exist to overcome financial and connectivity barriers. Teachers also expect students should be able to share their work digitally under a Creative Commons license. They should be able to use email with their peers only and share their likenesses digitally in class activity photos and movie projects. We send out forms asking permission for students to be allowed to do these things and we hope every one of you trust that these permissions are worthwhile. We understand that in some situations where the safety of a student is at risk if their whereabouts are discovered online, exceptions are warranted. But if that's the case, please bring this to our attention directly so we can be sure not only that your concerns are addressed, but that we can make sure their teachers are aware of these restrictions and the reasons behind them. Throughout the year, we are going to work really hard to make sure the hardware downtime is minimized for your students. We want their laptops to be well maintained and running safely, so if they have any issues with their laptops, they should bring it to the tech office ASAP, and we'll troubleshoot what's going on with them. I often get chances to come into their classroom to teach them the applications on their laptops, but if they ever have questions, they are welcome to come see us one-on-one, -on -one so we can help them find the right answers as they need them. We obviously work to keep your students as safe as we can, but ultimately the only reliable way is to teach them self-awareness of their online habits and to promote digital citizenship so they make good choices. So what is digital citizenship? 
That's a way bigger topic than I have time to go over here. But in a nutshell, we emphasize appreciation and respect for this amazing advantage they have when given access to technology. We also highlight some of the dangers they might find on the internet and how to avoid them, how to ethically present who they are online and the permanent effects of their time online, and methods on how to effectively filter the unending junk pushed on them so they can research useful and trustworthy knowledge from the web. Digital citizenship is a huge piece of online safety, but unfortunately we cannot rest assured all students will make good choices all the time. To reinforce self-regulation, we find that clearly telling students we monitor their laptop usage regularly is a very effective reminder. Students should have no expectation of privacy on district-controlled technology. Staff administration, and parents all have the right to view all activity on district systems, including laptop usage and email. We employ a number of techniques to monitor and archive access so we can track irresponsible activity if needed. An application called Land School provides teachers the ability, while at school, to monitor a few or all of the screens of each class so they can ensure students stay on task though they cannot view student screens while they are at home with this tool. It also logs every key students press in one big continuous text file, regardless of the application or website they are in, so that we have a digital trail to follow on systems we have no direct control over, such as social media. This is particularly useful to help eliminate online cyberbullying. We do record all web history on the student account of every district laptop each school year, and all email is archived for 10 years by law. While students are on our network, we have two layers of web filtering in place, a local firewall and a much more comprehensive filter provided by OpenDNS. This is a national service that dynamically monitors web content and labels sites as safe or not much more quickly than our local staff ever could. These tools do provide very good regulation of internet content, but they are not perfect. No system could possibly automate filtering the whole of the internet perfectly. A motivated student can find ways around them to access inappropriate content, which is why we periodically check their web traffic. Additionally, while on any other network, they are only subject to the filters in place on that other network. At your home or on any other public network, they can access anything that is not filtered by that network. And in most cases, those are wide open to all traffic. If you wish, you may add OpenDNS filtering for free to your own home network. Just go to their website and follow their instructions. Just remember, even if you do this, no filter is perfect, and often there are ways around these filters. The very best way to protect your kids is to be involved regularly using random checks of their web history. I'd also like to clarify one other important point. We do not allow Facebook to be used on district laptops, whether at school or at home. While there are many legitimate uses for social media, at the middle school level, we believe the distractions and dangers outweigh the benefits, and technically, no user under the age of 13 is allowed to have their own Facebook account by law anyway. If you as a parent allow your child to use Facebook, please only allow this use on personal computers and not on school-provided computers. We do check for this traffic specifically and team leaders will limit student access to the laptop if Facebook activity is found. Once you have finished this video, filled out the response form, and have signed the paperwork that goes along with it, your 7th or 8th grade student will be allowed to take their laptops home. To take it home, students must sign out the device from their homeroom teacher at the end of the day. Teachers may ask why the students need it and 
may refuse to let it go at their discretion. Sixth grade students are generally not allowed to use their laptops at home unless special arrangements are made. If it goes home, it should only be used by that student or the parents of that student. Siblings or other relatives should not be allowed to access the laptop. Parents have the right to all student passwords. If a student is reluctant to give you their password for the laptop or their Google account, please remove their access to that laptop and contact us so we can discover why. Most of the trouble students get into on their laptops is done at night while at home. Parents cannot assume their students are always making good choices any more than we can. But we find a few simple steps on your part can make all the difference. Don't let students do homework in their bedroom if there is a quiet common area available like the dining room, home office, or even kitchen table. Don't let students use their laptop on their bed or near open food or drink. Set a time to turn technology off at night. If they need to work past that time, it can be an exception they request from you, not the norm. And the single most important thing you as a parent can do is to monitor your children's web history randomly a few times a month. Not only does this bring attention to inappropriate use, it helps you understand the websites your kids are going to and allows you to ask them about their good activity as well as the bad. Part of the MLTI program was designed to increase parent computer knowledge. Let the kids show you what they're doing and how to use applications on the laptops. This is a great opportunity to emphasize some common sense laptop care tips. Please never put this laptop in a backpack, even in its case. The abuse kids' backpacks take is astronomical and is greatly minimized when everyone can see a specific laptop case instead of a generic backpack. Wearing it on your back can also warp the entire laptop. Please don't attempt to clean the laptop on your own with anything other than a dry cotton rag. Students are welcome to visit us in the tech office and clean their laptops with approved cleaner and microfiber rags anytime they want to. Keep laptops away from extremes of cold, heat, and humidity. Leaving a laptop out in the cold car or while taking a hot shower can cause condensation inside the device and moisture is the enemy of electronics. It is the student's responsibility to make sure their laptop is charged overnight if they bring it home so they can use it for a full day at school. Teachers will stop letting them take it home if this becomes a recurring problem. When wrapping the charger cords, it is very important to leave a gentle loop at the base of the transformer block before winding the, around the cable wings. We discuss this in person with all students at the beginning of the year, so every one of them should know how to do this. When damage does occur to the laptops, MS8072, the MLTI project, and Apple have done a very good job keeping repair costs away from families. All MLTI MacBook Airs are covered by an excellent warranty the full duration of this project. An MS8072 is ACMT certified to repair them in-house, so turnaround is quick and repair quality is never in question. When damage is accidental, MS8072 usually covers the cost of the non-warranty repair without fuss, unless there is a question about the nature of the accident. We do reserve the right to bill the parent for malicious or negligent damage if we see fit, though to date this has never happened. If a laptop is lost or stolen, it must be reported to us immediately so we can coordinate a search or file a police report. In this case, the MLTI project will usually cover the replacement cost of the device. If only the case or charger is lost, 
we may build a parent for the replacement cost of that item. Though, again, our goal is to keep this program as transparent to families as possible, provided budget allows this. I'd like to take a moment to tell you a little bit about the features available to parents in our Infinite Campus Parent Portal. Last year, we transitioned to this tool to enhance our standards-based grading methods, and we feel it has vastly improved that whole experience. Visiting this portal allows you to more accurately understand your child's progress as you can view their in-progress grades and schedule. Based on that success, this year we have added the ability to access their food service account information as well. Now when you log in, you can see what they're eating, how much money is on their account, and even add money to their account with fewer fees than our previous provider charged in most cases. The easiest way to access this new portal is by visiting your school's website and clicking on the Parents tab at the top of the page, and then selecting Infinite Campus Parent Portal. This will bring you to a login page where you may also see important announcements. If you have already set yourself up as a user, log in here and enjoy. If you've not done this yet, click on the new user and enter the unique activation key that was sent home with your student on September 23rd. If this key did not make it to you, please let us know and we can give you that information again. Next, it will ask you to provide your own username and password. Once you hit submit, you'll be taken into the portal. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with each of the choices on the left and verify that the information we have is accurate. And that is it. Thank you for your time. I hope you all now have a good understanding of our technology use here at MS8072, but if anything is still unclear, send us a message so we can address your concerns.